Hey gang, we are back at Holy Sepulchre Cemetery in Alsip, Illinois. Alsip is a suburb southwest of Chicago. We've been here a number of times before, but today we're here to pay respects at the grave of one fallen, one of two fallen Chicago patrolmen, police officers, who was killed in the line of duty back in 1982. It's a this is going to be a perplexing story. There's really no, there's going to be different sides to it. There's going to be a lot of different opinions. Of course, we back the blue. We're going to tell the story, but it could be the story of an innocent man who was falsely convicted, or maybe not. Let's take the walk. We'll walk to the grave of Officer William Fahey. Junior, this terrible event happened, as I said, in 1982. Boy, that was the year after I got out of college. And we're going to talk about something that I remember from back in those years that's associated with this case. Now, Patrolman Fahey and another Chicago police officer, Patrolman Richard J. O'Brien, were assigned to the Gangs Crime South Unit, very, very tough area in Chicago. Always tough, still tough today. They weren't regular partners. Patrolman O'Brien's regular partner was off on sick, and Patrolman Fahey was filling in on a desk job for a furloughed policeman. So they were together, and they were actually at a funeral for a fellow officer, patrolman James Doyle. Now, they had seen a car that looked suspicious. Of course, it had run a red light, so they pulled it over. It was at the intersection of 81st Street and Morgan Street on the south side. And again, <laughs> not a good area. Got to be really careful, even as a police officer always be on your guard. Well, Patrolman O'Brien, who was driving the squad car, approached the driver's side, and at the same time, Patrolman Fahey, William Fahey, approached the passenger side. Patrolman Fahey ordered the passenger out and was patting him down, ostensibly for a weapon which is kind of typical procedure, and as he was attempting to handcuff the passenger, that man gained control of his own 357 Magnum revolver, spun around, and fired at close range. And sadly, the bullet struck Patrolman Fahey right behind the left ear. The assailant then fired across the trunk of the car, he hit Patrolman O'Brien in the left arm and hip. Now, one of the men in the vehicle then disarmed Patrolman O'Brien, and then the two fled. They cut out of there. Patrolman O'Brien died a short time after the shooting. He was taken to Little Company of Mary Hospital in Evergreen Park and Patrolman Fahey died the following morning at 11.14 a.m. He never regained consciousness. Now, these killers were apprehended a short time later. They went to trial. They were convicted. And at the time, they were sentenced to death. The two brothers who would end up serving life prison terms. One of them died in prison and the other, he stayed in prison, I'm going to say up until two years ago. So that's going to be about 35 or 40 years. His name is Jackie Wilson. Now here's the perplexing part. When they were convicted, we were right in the middle of this whole horrible thing that was coming down and it was 
this commander, John Birch. Now, if you lived in Chicago back in the 80s, everyone's heard of John Birch. A terrible, horrible person who led the charge on basically electrocuting and doing other horrible things to suspects to get confessions. You know, police brutality at its worst. And this guy was convicted, fired. I can't remember if he went to prison or not, but it was a huge and is still a huge stain. Chicago Blue, that guy, I think he's passed on. But anyway, Jackie Wilson, his brother, were part of this whole thing. And of course, they said they were coerced, tortured. And you got to wonder, you got to go, well, if it's John Burge, and it was really bad. Now what? Now what do you do? So I stand here and I say, you know what? There was also another, another tough thing that happened that kind of complicates the case. And that is the witness that they were prosecution was counting on. There was something messed up and fixed and it wasn't right. So you take all that into account and you gotta, you gotta say, I don't know. Was he guilty? May have a man here who has spent the last 40 some years or 30, 30 some years of his life in prison. And you have to wonder, you know, I, I go back, you know, I, I talk about Governor George Ryan and that he commuted all the death sentences. Well, they would have been put to death by now. But I don't know if we'll ever know if they were innocent or guilty. There's a good chance that they may have done it. So it's, it's a quandary. It's a moral quandary. And of course, innocent men being put to death, it's happened. It's gonna still happen. It's, it's a problem. But I can tell you this, because of that creep, John Burge, there were a lot of guilty people that got off. They didn't need to be tortured. They would have went to trial just like these two, and they would have been found guilty just like these two. They probably were guilty, just like these two, but a lot of them back then got off. We are at the veterans part of the cemetery here. This is where patrolman William Fahey is buried just up ahead here. So let's go walk to his grave and pay respects. And this is his grave right here. The back of the blue flag. Gotta love it. The American flag. And it looks like his grave is, is being kept up very nicely. Let's read the inscription. So it says, Dad, William P. Fahey, 1947-1982, until we meet again. And there you see the, the badge. Guys, these guys are heroes. All those who served and died and all those that served and lived and live today are heroes in my book. I black the blue. That really makes me sad standing here that no matter who, what, or where that these two men had to die while in the line of duty. Patrolman Fahey here was a 10-year veteran of the department and during his tenure he received 19 honorable mentions and numerous letters of appreciation and he was and is survived by his wife. I'm not sure if she is still alive but 
Uh, he has three children, and I know his, one of his children, I think it was daughter Erin, say, YouTube, you can watch, that there was a racehorse that was named in honor of William Fahey, and I think it retired and it became a a police horse and then it went into retirement and there's a whole program it's really cool so he is remembered and it's it's just a a legacy that's going to live on and may he never be forgotten rest in peace police officer patrolman William P Fahey and also patrolman Richard J O'Brien Rest in peace, guys, and thank you for your sacrifices. Thank you for your service.